What's up ladies and gentlemen, Universal Mastery. Welcome back to my channel. What I do here is I break down the occult sciences and I break them down to a very practical level so that you can use them and apply them in your day-to-day -day life and get real actual results using your awareness, okay? Um, first thing right off the bat, I just wanna let you know who I am. My name is Jeremiah Schwartz. I am a professional occultist and I am fully initiated in the entire Kabbalah. Um, being the uh, the top of the tree, the Sephiroth, behind the Sephiroth, the tunnels of set, and then the clip off. Okay, um, that's just to give you a little bit of an understanding of who I am. Um, I'm also studied when it comes to the archetypal tarot, um, and I'm studied when it comes to planetary energies and things in regards to astrology. Okay, once again, that was just to give you an idea of who you're getting this information from, because that's very important. Okay. Um, but going right into it, what is the topic of today's video? Okay, the topic of today's video is going to be what is the differences, and not only just what is the differences, but what are um, these two things that I'm going to be talking about? Okay, so the two things is going to be what is Satanism and what is Luciferianism? Okay, and not only am I going to give you a very clear understanding of what these two things are, but I am going to also show you the differences of them because they're not the same. Um, they are two different um, practices in a sense. They're two different technologies okay, that you can apply. And obviously, you can use Satanism and Luciferianism together. Um, that's what most left-hand path magicians use. Um, and that's what you should use if you are a left-hand path uh, left-hand path uh, magician or initiate, okay? And they go hand in hand with each other. So once again, I'm gonna be explaining what these two things are, Satanism and Luciferianism. So if you want to know uh, more in depth about what they are and the differences between them, just to give you a practical understanding, then definitely I would recommend staying for the rest of the video. Okay, so let's jump right into it. Okay, so let's start with Satanism. What exactly is Satanism? Okay, so we hear a lot of talk about Satanism being adversarial, right? It means you are an adversary, or it means you are the rebel, right? People like to refer to um, Satanism as essentially being like Satan in the Bible. So whatever attributes and characteristics that Satan had in the Bible, that must mean if you embody those characteristics and those attributes, then you are basically being satanic. Therefore, that is Satanism, just taking on those attributes. And, um, you know, that's sort of true, but it's, it's not really that. It's more so Satanism is essentially using dark matter energy. So a person who uses dark matter energy in a destructive way, okay? And when I say in a destructive way, what I mean is to destroy, obviously destructive to destroy, to kill, to eliminate, to delete, okay? To get rid of, using dark matter energy, okay? To torture, um, yeah, to cause pain, to cause suffering. Um, that is what Satanism is, okay? And to cause all of these things in a psychic way. So to cause suffering, to cause torture, to cause pain, to cause death, to delete something, to eliminate, to destroy, using psychic powers using dark matter energy to cause any of those things using psychic powers is exactly what satanism is okay so obviously there is a lot of people that right off the bat think oh my god that's evil right why would you want to do any of those things that's obviously evil um and obviously if that's immediately what you think 
you know, I can understand that. I, it makes sense why you would think that, because obviously from the perspective of religion, you know, you're taught morals, right? You're taught exactly what good and not good is, what good and evil is, right and wrong. Um, but the reality is, is it's not evil. It's just a different type of technology using occult magic or using occult science. So, for example, um, let's say hypothetically there was somebody who was going to harm, let's say hypothetically you had a child, and let's say that there was somebody that was stronger and bigger than you physically and was threatening to physically harm your little child. Child, let's say hypothetically is six years old. Okay, so let's say you had an option to take the risk and allow this person to maybe harm your child, right? Maybe that person was really going to do it, right? Maybe this person that threatened you and your child, maybe they're actually going to act on that. Okay, so let's say that you have a, have a choice to allow that to happen, to see how your fate plays out, you know, take a risk, so to speak. Or let's say the other option is, let's say hypothetically this person is also skilled in the occult sciences and knows how to use them. So let's say that this person knows how to use dark matter energy to cause harm to their quote unquote enemies or to cause harm to somebody that would be considered an enemy like someone in our scenario that would be wanting to harm an innocent child, right? So would, what, and my question to you, the viewer, is would it be evil for someone to use psychic warfare in a satanic way against somebody who's trying to harm an innocent child? Okay, take a second to contemplate that. Because the answer is no, that is not evil. And that's why when it comes to the occult and when it comes to psychic warfare in um, different technologies like Satanism, there is no such thing as evil in this field. There is cause and there is effect. And obviously you want to be responsible with what you're doing because the more you use, let's say hypothetically, Satanism in the wrong ways, and what would the wrong ways be? Going against cosmic evolution. So if you're going around using your power uh, to do things that are not in alignment with higher evolution, source evolution, then you will get quote unquote karma from that. You will get some sort of effect from your cause. And that effect that you'll get if you're using your satanic powers in an unresponsible way, I can guarantee the effect you're going to get is not something that you want. It's going to teach you that you're using your powers in the wrong way. And obviously, it's a part of the learning experience when you get into this field and you start dabbling in the occult. There are going to be times where you use your magic or you practice with your magic and you may use it for the wrong reasons but you will get trained very quickly um, what you can and can't do because at the, end of the at the end of the day, everything is governed by some sort of cosmic law. There is something that is known as source, which is evolution. So obviously, if you're using your power against evolution, you will be course corrected by quote unquote evolution itself, okay? So once again, taking it back to the scenario that I created that was hypothetical, it would not be evil to use Satanism against somebody who was harming an innocent child. That's just another form of warfare. It's another form of technology that can be utilized in the occult, which is known as Satanism. It is the ability to use black magic, dark magic, in a very strategic way to eliminate, destroy, suffer, harm, torture a target. Now, the question that you want to ask yourself to make sure that you're using it properly or responsibly is, who is your target, right? So once again, if your target is somebody that doesn't deserve to be hurt, tortured, you know, suffer, destroyed, whatever, deleted, 
from reality, if they don't deserve that, if that's not what they, what, what, if that's not what source thinks that that person should have and you go and you try and do that, I'm telling you, you will be course corrected and you may cause harm to that target, but you will also have to deal with the effect of that harm that you sent to that target. So there actually will be an energetic pushback, meaning let's say you use Satanism to harm a person that didn't really deserve to be harmed to that level, it may actually manifest, right? It may manifest. It just depends on the person, depends on the scenario, depends on the situation, depends on their evolution. It may actually manifest, but let's say they were a target that wasn't supposed to be harmed and you were doing it out of self-importance or out of very petty reasons. Well, now, later down the road, who knows exactly what time, but you're going to have to deal with the pain that you cause that target and you don't even know it, right? And it comes and it hits you out of nowhere and it shows you how irresponsible you were when you used your power uh, in this scenario, in this scenario, uh, satanic magic. Um, it'll show you how irresponsible you were when you used satanic magic um, that time on a target that didn't deserve it. But that's the whole art and the whole reason of why we get into a call initiation is to achieve source, to get in full alignment with cosmic evolution, to get in full alignment with source, to link with it, so that you can identify the chaos within the human. So the reality is, is most people are infested by chaos, but that doesn't mean every person is necessarily you know, your enemy. It definitely doesn't mean every single person's your enemy. It doesn't mean everyone's your friend or everyone's got your best interest at, at heart. That's a fact, but it doesn't mean that everyone's your enemy. Your enemies are going to be people that try you. Okay. They're going to pe they're going to be people that cross boundaries with you in a, in a threatening way. Those are your enemies. So the more you go through initiatory experiences, in regards to the occult, the more you get in attunement with who the enemies are. So then you know how to use your powers properly. And trust me, they work. It is a real science and it is utilized by high sections of the government. It's used, utilized by the people that rule the world. Okay. And me being one of the people that uses it, it, it is a very real um, technology and it does work. So that's essentially what Satanism is. Okay, it is a technology that is used to cause suffering, torture, destruction, um, and deletion. Okay, it's technology for that. And it is a technology that is being used by um, people. This is a fact. It is a technology that is being used by people that are not responsible with it. Meaning they're using it on the mass collective. Um trying to lower the mass collective to feed off of it, to create consumers, okay? Um, it's the same concept as MK Ultra, where they call it SRA, which is Satanic Ritual Abuse, where you cause so much torture and suffering or trauma to a target that they separate their soul, their, their spirit and their soul separate from each other and then you can place an egregor in their energy field. And then they identify with the egregor. So they take on an alter personality that the person who's using SRA wants them to take on. So the person who's doing the satanic ritual abuse, they have a target, they torture them, they give them trauma so much so that they literally separate their soul and their spirit, move away from their body and then they're a perfect vessel to put an egregor in, to put a programmed entity within them. So then they can be fully controlled by the person who is doing the satanic ritual abuse. Um, it's the same concept if you've ever seen the movie called Split, okay, where the, the man has all these different types of alters, uh, all these different types of personalities, and then 
the last altar or the last personality is an actual monster. It's like a beast. And every single personality comes with diff different characteristics and different attributes and different habits and ways of acting. Um, and this is, this is how you control uh, a mass collective consciousness is to uh, subtly induce it with SRA. So this is something that we see on a mass collective level. That's why you see all the Satanism going on in music videos. That's why you see it on TV shows. That's why A-list celebrities, when they do, uh, most A-list celebrities, when they do live performances, they're using a lot of ritualistic symbolism because they're performing rituals. Uh, and uh, and every, uh, every one of them is programmed for satanic uh, ritual abuse to the mass collective. Just go ahead, go on my channel and look up the video I have of Cardi B and then look up the video I have of uh, Lil Nas X and I will be making more of those videos because I like doing them, they're fun. So that's what Satanism is, it's a technology. It's not good or evil, it just is, okay? so. Obviously, you want to be responsible with it and you want to use it in the proper way because the more responsible you're with it, the actual, it's a funny paradox, the more powerful you are. So when you're in alignment with evolution and you understand evolution and you learn how to direct your satanic uh, abilities and your powers in the right direction, that increases your power because one, you're doing sources work, okay? You're doing evolution's work, removing people that are out of alignment with evolution. And something's got to remove them. It's just like a bully, right? In school, there's tons of bullies, okay? Every school has a bully. There is an archetypal bully. And I'm telling you this every time. Like, you can study it yourself. That bully at some point in their life, whether it's in school or when they graduate or at some point in their life, they get checked. Something happens to the bully where they realize they can't act that way, okay? Someone checks the bully. Something checks the bully, okay? What, I, what do I mean by checks? Something shows that bully that they cannot behave that way because if they continue to, their life will be done. Okay, and this happens for every bully. There is no human being that is a bully at a young age and continues to be a bully, uh, you know, later in their life. There is always something that checks them. And usually you'll find out that bullies back in, let's say, you know, usually around the middle school, high school age group, when they get older, around their 30s or even late 20s to 30s to 40s, they end up completely changing into being really nice people. It's really funny how that works, but there's something that has to check them. A lot of the times it's, it's cosmic law that checks them, meaning the universe shows them signs uh, and brings other people in their life to show them that they can't act like that. Maybe someone comes and bullies them and shows them, hey, you better not do that. You know what I mean? So, may, someone may um, rough them up a little bit to show them what they are doing to other people and how it feels so that they don't do it anymore. Well, the same thing happens in the psychic field where there are people that are, that are using these powers for reasons that are not beneficial to evolution. And then when you learn how to master these powers, you can direct it on those people to show them what they're actually doing and teach them a very valuable lesson. And a lot of the times, I mean, the concept between, a you know, someone that's a bully and, uh, you know, growing up and realizing what they did was wrong and changing as a person, that context between psychic warfare in regards to there are people using psychic warfare, uh, especially Satanism in a, in a very irresponsible way, that's not, it's not the same context as the bully situation. Those, these are, it's a different kind of breed of people. Um, so a lot of the times when you learn how to use Satanism properly, and you direct it on the people that aren't using it properly, it can it can very well destroy their life. It can literally take them to the very rock bottom. And you know, sometimes, you know, lives can be lost. Okay, this is a whole nother science, this is a whole nother field 
that really deals with this. And this is a real thing that actually happens. Um, and that's just something that you have to be aware of and you have to be ready for when you get involved with this uh, practice because you are dealing with a science here. Um, and it is a very powerful and ancient science that's been used throughout time. So you definitely want to make sure you're responsible with it because if you're not, there, there are other people out there that will show you how to be responsible with it. And you could say it's all under the governance of source itself. It's all under the governance of evolution. So if you're out here using this satanic power in, the, in an irresponsible way, you, it's only a matter of time until somebody that is you know, possessed by source, possessed by evolution, comes across your path and sees what you're doing because maybe you're threatening them or maybe you're threatening someone they, they love or maybe you're just... You just, you're just on the list to be food, right? When you're in alignment with source, nothing can come against you because you are an embodiment of evolution. So if you're using this power irresponsibly, like a lot of these A-list celebrities, like, you know, the inner elites, the bloodlines, the royal families, all of these people, um, your end is written in the stars, Okay, you are not going to have a good outcome. And it's just a part of the evolution. You know, if you're not using your power responsibly, you're going to have consequences. And those consequences at some point in time will catch up with you. And everyone intuitively knows this. Everyone intuitively knows this. It's like if you're in a, a re relationship and you're cheating and you're lying to your partner, it's only a matter of time until that person figures out. Or it's only a matter of time until you start feeling like, like shit, right? Until you start feeling like, wow, I, I can't keep lying like this. I, I feel like I'm losing myself. Or your partner will find out, or both. It's the same concept. We all understand this as human beings because we all carry that uh, source within us, you know, we're all under this governance of evolution. So that's one thing. So once again, to recap Satanism, it literally just means to destroy, eliminate, cause torturing, suffering, using dark magic, black magic. Okay. Dark occult science. Okay. That's literally what it means. Can be used in a good way, in regards to evolution can be, and when I say good, in a proper way, or it can be used in a irresponsible way. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about Luciferianism. What exactly does that mean? What is that science? Okay, so Luciferianism has everything to do with souls, okay? That's why most A-list celebrities that sign contracts with music industries sell their soul. And the spirit that they're selling their soul to is often, most often, Lucifer, okay? Um, Lucifer is the one that contains soul. So even if you're selling your soul to like Satan or uh, Baphomet or whatever spirit, Lucifer gets the soul, okay? Because Lucifer is the upline of all these other arch demons in regards to souls, okay? Um, and in regards to... <sighs> All of the Cliffothic archdemons. Lucifer is the upline. Okay, he collects souls. That's why he's known uh, to uh, such a high degree. I mean, Lucifer is is a is a spirit that has been around for eternity. Okay, a very long time, and the reason is because he uses the technology of souls, okay? Because souls are very valuable and they're very um, powerful when you know how to use them and harness them. So you can turn souls into energy generators for uh, uh, timeline shifts or for your own personal evolution. Um, that's why there's a whole branch of uh, occult magic that is used by the people that have been running the world called Luciferianism because it is that powerful and it is the technology of harnessing human souls. 
Okay, so that is exactly what Luciferianism is. So what does that mean? So when you understand Kabbalah, you have the Sephiroth, and then you have the Klippoth, okay? The Sephiroth is going to be the aspect of evolution that you naturally go through. It's, it's, a, it's an aspect of evolution that your spirit travels through, okay? And you go from the bottom sphere, Malkuth, to Yesod, to Ho, to Netzach, to Tifereth, to Gevura, to Chesed, and then you have the Sephiroth, okay? So the Sephiroth is a natural aspect of evolution. Literally, you don't need to know about it to be going through it. All you need is your intent and to be focused on getting to your highest potential and embracing the spiritual aspects of life, the hidden aspects of life uh, and yourself, uh, uh, embracing the, the occult, the hidden uh, sciences, contemplating uh, Carl Jung's type of work gets you pushed into this spiritual evolutionary system, okay? Which is the Sephiroth, that is universe A. It is mainly spirit driven, okay? So what happens at a young age, and if you study my channel, you'll notice by now, but what happens at a young age is the soul gets shelled, okay? So the soul gets shelled from SRA, satanic ritual abuse, which is literally pumped to us uh, from so many different directions, you know, ever since we're born, you know, once again, it's on the news, it's on the radio, it's on TV shows, it's on Netflix, it's on YouTube, it's on your, your Instagrams, it's on uh, the newspapers, it's everywhere. You're, you're, you are not somebody, <laughs> you are not somebody that is going to avoid this because it is a mass collective thing that is taking place. So the only way to really make yourself immune is to go through the initiatory system of embodying the powers that make you immune to this, energetically speaking. So once again, the soul gets shelled and where it gets shelled is within the clip off. Okay. So the clip off is at the bottom of the Sephiroth. So the Sephiroth is the top and the clip off is the bottom. Now there's a front end of the clip off and there's a back end of the clip off. The front end of the clip off is still in universe A. So when you're in the Sephiroth and you're traveling through your initiations, trying to evolve, really what you're traveling to get to is to the back side of the clip off so you can retrieve your soul. So you can basically absorb all the fragmented aspects of your soul that have been uh, shelled throughout your lifetime. Okay, And not only just uh, reabsorb those fragments, but other powers that reside within the clip off and the tunnels of set, which are also universe B. Okay, so you travel through that. Now, once again, what happens to the average human being is they don't pursue that spiritual evolutionary journey. So they're already shelled and they don't even know they're shelled and they just hate their life. They just, by a default, they just don't like life. And they just play the, they play the blame game. They point the finger. They they're like victims. They settle for mediocrity. This is the average person. Okay, this is like the majority of humans. Okay, and I don't need to explain it. You can look around. Right, you see people. They're locked into a chaotic state with this little parasite that runs their awareness, and their souls are in hell. The clipa, the universe A of clipa, shell. Okay, that's why the parasite completely takes over their awareness because they don't have a soul. They don't have the intuition that's telling them, hey, maybe you should pursue uh, your spiritual evolution. Maybe you should pursue something that's going to help you break out of this. They don't care. They're just, no, 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 no. They're, they're just being right. Okay, and that's, it's just a part of evolution. You know, it's always going to be like that to some degree. So, but with that being said, when the soul gets shelled, that is an aspect of getting your soul trapped, okay? So when you're using Luciferianism, the goal is to essentially um, take souls, harness souls within the clip off so that they can then fuel your evolution, okay? So that they can fuel 
your growth and not only fuel your growth or fuel your evolution, but increase your power. Okay, so for example, you have an A-list celebrity. This A-list celebrity sells their soul. Let's use Cardi B for an example. Let's say they sell their soul, right? They come to a point where they are given a contract. And they say, hey, if you sign this contract and it has all the information on it in regards to you're going to make this amount of money, you're going to have to do these certain things, you're going to have to drop music this so often, and then at the very bottom, there is ownership of the, essentially of the A-list celebrity, the Cardi B, and it's uh, written that there is an occult order that is associated with the music label, meaning you are now under their ownership. Um, and the occult order is programming within this document that they will be selling their soul if they sign it. Because what are they getting in return? They're getting money, they're getting fame, and they're getting reputation. Okay? So let's say hypothetically Cardi B signs that document. Well, she just sold her soul. Okay? Because I can guarantee intuitively she probably knew something is a little sketchy about it and she may have knew what she was getting herself into but she didn't care because she wanted the money she wanted the reputation and she wanted the fortune uh, and all of those things so long story short that's selling your soul okay uh, and it's that easy okay so now that you're a part of the music label you are now under oath to perform certain types of music videos and, and put out certain types of content, literally, there are people that also help you write your lyrics to your songs to make sure that they're putting occult symbolism within your lyrics. So now, and this, oftentimes the A-list celebrity doesn't fully understand what's happening, but they're now under, uh, they're under an oath from the contract because they sold their soul so they have to perform these things. So let's say hypothetically they go to do a music video, like Cardi B, and she doesn't really understand all the symbolism that's going on in the music video. But the directors and the producers are saying, we need this, we need that, we need this. Cardi, I need you to wear that, and this and that. This person stands here, this person goes there. And really what's going on is they're setting up a whole ritual. Okay, This is a whole occult ritual. And the stuff that Cardi B is wearing is ritualistic, the words from her song, are ritualistic and it's all satanic ritual magic meaning the ritual that they're performing from the lyrics from the music video the visuals is geared to shell your soul so that is satanic in nature because that causes suffering destruction excuse me suffering destruction um deletion uh and torture. I mean, when your shell is, when your soul is shell, that's not a fun thing. Okay, so that's satanic. Okay, um, now the A-list celebrity is getting paid from the music label that is under the occult order, which is being funded by the real elites, being the Rothschilds the inner royal families, the Sanhedrin Jews, okay, these types of people, they're being funded by them, people that are printing money, okay? So Cardi B is getting paid by the music label. The music label is getting paid by the occult order, which is being funded by the real elites, okay? So it's the real elites the 0.1%, not the 1%, the real 0.1%. It's a small group of people, literally like around 74 families that rule the world in regards to occult warfare and occult magic and science. So they're the ones that are getting the ritual benefits from Cardi's beat, from Cardi B's music. Uh, hypothetically speaking, her music video and her lyrics from her songs because of all the observers 
watching the music video, listening to the song, and all the people that she's hellizing, shelling, it's all uplining to the real 0.1 elites, and then everyone else is getting compensated with money for doing that. But energetically speaking, that is actually not good for Cardi B. It's actually not good for the music industry. And it's definitely not good for the occult order that's supporting the music industry. Because, remember what I said, when you're using satanic magic in a way where you're just hellizing the mass collective as a big mass ritual, like a big free-for-all, like a big default, we're going to put you in hell there's going to be consequences to that. That's why a lot of these A-list celebrities that get very deep into this occult magic in regards to putting it in their music videos and within their lyrics, they, you will tend to see them throughout time go through very rough situations. A lot of them lose their minds. A lot of them go crazy. Um, a lot of them take their own lives. And at some point in time, some of them will try to break away and then try to rebel against what they were doing. Because remember, Cardi B doesn't necessarily know exactly what's going on. All she knows is that she's getting paid. Okay. But then there are some artists that do know what's going on and they go to parties and they, they're, they're being informed about what's going on and they continue to do it and they 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 even do it in a more sinister way so that's that would be like the Jay-Z the the Beyonce the uh, the Katy Perry um, the Madonna the Lady Gaga right these are art these are A-list celebrities that are well aware of this occult magic that's going on and they're bought in with it meaning they want to be the the high priestesses and the 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 queens and kings of the Illuminati but they're idiots because, one, they're using the wrong system of Kabbalah and they're not linked with source. So what they're doing is not evolutionary based. So they, their demise is set in stone and that's a fact. Okay. So the point of me mentioning this is that is Luciferian technology is to get souls shelled because Lucifer uses those souls to empower his spirit, to empower his being. And when you get somebody to shell someone else's soul, so for example, when Cardi B makes a music video and it shells people's souls, and then remember, she sold her soul to Lucifer, and that occult order was on the contract of that selling the soul to Lucifer and then that occult order is being funded by the real inner elites so they're pretty much the 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 bitches of the elites the real elites all the energy from Cardi B having sold her soul to Lucifer and then shelling all those other people is uplining to the inner elites so they're able to use those shelled souls to create their kingdoms, to create more physical wealth and more physical abundance. That's why they have so much money and that's why they, they have been able to rule the world for such a long time. But an aspect of Lucifer that they didn't fully understand and they don't fully understand is that Lucifer, by his nature, is a spirit that is the hidden aspect of chaos that is chaotic but that secretly wants to destroy chaos from the inside out so what does that mean that means that lucifer dropped down from heaven went to hell and then took ownership of hell complete dominance so lucifer is a spirit that goes into chaos as a chaotic entity and secretly wants to destroy all the chaos, but the chaos doesn't know that. So then he destroys it and rules over it and takes it over completely. And now the chaos is gone. So when it comes to all these inner elites that are using this Luciferian technology to rule the world, specifically the West, what they don't realize is that if they're not in alignment with source, that means the Lucifer 
archetype is going to be used on them because they are the chaotic entities that are using the Lucifer entity to do their bidding to, to shell souls by getting A-list celebrities to sell their soul to Lucifer and then do the Luciferian technology. But what they don't know is that Lucifer wants to destroy them. Lucifer wants to destroy these elites that are doing that because he doesn't like it. It's his nature. He is a chaotic entity that allows the shelling of souls to take place, but secretly will find the root or the way to get to the root of the problem, which is the inner elites. So that's why when you're an occultist like myself, it is necessary to make a deal with Lucifer to gain all his power because then you learn how to shell the inner elites and then become their uplines. So everything that they do to everybody else uplines all the way to the person who shelled the elites and then they lose all their power, okay? So that's essentially what Luciferianism is. It is soul technology, it is using soul. So now I have all the power of Lucifer, so I know how to literally take someone's soul and I can shell it if I want. If I need to shell someone's soul, I can do that because I have the power from Lucifer to do that. I have the knowledge on how to do it too. Or I can completely erase someone's soul. So when you shell a soul, that's how you get someone to, to be tortured, right? And you can make their soul, you can add suffering to their soul, which produces energy, a lot of energy. So I can fuel my evolution or my physical reality by causing suffering or adding suffering to someone's soul. But let's say hypothetically there's somebody that I meet and I've done this, I've done this, like I've, I've used it and it, it really does work, it's real. Um, so let's say hypothetically that there's somebody that is going through hell on earth, meaning their soul is already shelled. Let's say for example, like a heavy drug addict, well you can take that person's soul that is already shelled and being hellized already and you can, you can delete their soul, you can destroy their soul, erase it. Now obviously, you listening, you probably think, well that can't be good, does that mean the person dies? No. You can erase their soul, which means you erase all of their suffering, get rid of it, and then you can place your own copy of your soul or a self-similar aspect of your soul within the person, and then they will gain the attributes of you, and they will always uh, respect you for that, because they, they're gonna become an aspect of you and they're gonna feel better about themselves, all that suffering that they used to have is now gone, and now they're gaining attributes that you have, and they don't really understand why they feel better. Unless you tell them, obviously, but a lot of people don't understand that, but this can be done, and I've done it, and it works. Um, so you can, essentially, that's a form of healing. G getting someone's soul that is trapped and shelled in this completely addicted to drugs and suffering and completely erasing it, consuming it, adding it to yourself, letting it empower you, and then placing your own uh, self-similar soul into the person, which is essentially creating a copy of yourself within another person. So not only is that person getting attributes that you have and that person feels a lot better now, but they now forever want to serve you in regards to they have a deep respect for you and they want to do things to help you evolve, okay? It's just a fact. And that is much more evolutionary based than just trapping people's souls and making everyone in the mass collective suffer um, on a default level, which is what these inner elites have been doing for a long time. But remember, the secret of Lucifer is that he is the chaotic entity that allows that to happen, but then he finally, at some point in time, will get to the root of it, manifesting through people like myself that find the root and then use the technology on them so that they get shelled and then all that energy comes to people like me and anyone else who's self-similar. And I know a few people that use this technology. So, it's just a fact. So that's what Luciferianism is, okay? Yeah, that's it. So we, we went over Satanism and Luciferianism, okay? That's literally what it is in a nutshell. Um, yeah, so other than that, that's gonna wrap it up. So if you enjoyed this video, hit a thumbs up. 
Also hit the notification bell because I post videos as often as I can and hit the subscribe button because I love to see my subscribers shoot through the roof. And definitely make sure you drop down in the description and check out my Patreon. On my Patreon, I have exclusive content. Uh, some of that content is going to be geared towards actual occult practices that I perform on camera. And literally within this month, I'm going to be dropping uh, high-level practices that I'm performing, once again, on camera that are going to teach you step-by-step, step, one, what you need uh, in regards to tools and also what to do to gain the most power uh, within yourself to add to your energy field um, so that then you can start approaching uh, initiatory magic if that's something that you want to do in regards to clefothic initiation. Um, and I will be releasing a course on how to do that. But um, before that, it will prep you and prime you to do your own low magic, which is I'm going to teach you. So I'm going to teach you steps on how to do necromancy. I'm going to teach you how to summon the angels and take all their power, download it into yourself. I'm going to teach you how to summon all the uh, Ars Goetia demons and take their power into yourself. Um, and then I'm going to teach you how to do a spell, a very, a very powerful spell, so that you can see that all the stuff that you've been doing really has been increasing your power, and now you're able to apply it. So that is all stuff that I'm going to be teaching on my Patreon in video format this month. It is going to be, uh, I'm going to be releasing that content. So if you want to gain access to that, definitely check it out. You're going to find the um, Patreon once again at that first link in the description. Okay, so right now I have content on my Patreon that is in regards to the Kabbalah um, and some actual other um, occult practices as well. But I break down all the spheres on Kabbalah um, from the Sephiroth all the way to the Klipoth. Uh, I give you the attributions, the spirits associated with them, and my own personal experience having initiated through those spheres myself, which is extremely valuable information. And I highly recommend you check out if you want to understand what initiation uh, in the occult is like uh, in the first place, because a lot of people don't even know about that. Um, so in order to gain access to that content, you have to at least be a tier two member or up. In order to be a tier two, it costs $9.95 a month. Um, and if you do the math, that literally will come out to less than a dollar a day. So there really is no reason why you shouldn't be able to afford that, especially with the value that I have on there. As you go up in tiers, the benefits increase. I'm going to let you check that out for yourself. There is a top tier, which is called Tier 4, which is an actual service I perform for you, which is um, a service that a lot of people have taken advantage of. and is actually a necessary service to get the most out of your practices in regards to what I'm going to be teaching uh, and what I just mentioned about these step-by-step -step practices. It is actually going to be necessary to have the top tier service uh, to really make sure that you're getting 100% results uh, doing those practices. Um, basically, what I do in that service is I change your energy field. Okay, Me having worked through the entire initiatory system, I have the understanding and the power to do it to literally change your energy field. Okay, So I do a whole ritual on the 29th of every month for everyone who's top tier member, and I permanently change your energy field to not give energy to chaos to feed chaos, but to then suck energy away from chaos to fuel yourself in your own personal journey, your own personal path uh, to eventually achieving source. Um, so yeah, so you can check that out for yourself. That's going to be the top tier. With that being said, I'd like to give a special shout out to the highest tier members of the Patreon. I've got all their names mentioned below that Patreon link. So huge shout out to you, ladies and gentlemen. And then the next shout out I would like to give is to all of my Patreon subscribers in general. I highly appreciate all of you uh, for taking your knowledge and your practices to that next level. And then a third shout out to all of my YouTube subscribers. I appreciate all of you. Okay. Next thing I'd like to say is if you would like to book a tarot reading with me, definitely check out the second link below. Um, on my tarot, um, uh, in, not on my tarot, in my tarot card readings, um, I break it down in a very subjective, unique way, and I can literally locate exactly where you are in regards to Kabbalah. I can literally find where your spirit is located and where it wants to go and where it's headed 
uh, in the long-term future uh, in regards to your own initiation. And remember, you don't need to know about Kabbalah to be working through the tree. The whole idea of Kabbalah is it is the DNA strand, okay? So you're going through it whether you understand it or not, um, as long as you have made that intent that you are taking steps to achieve your highest potential. That starts you on the process. So I've done over 50 readings, and every single reading I've done, I've been able to pinpoint where people are located at on the tree. It's very precise, and see where they're headed for their near future and see where it's going for the long-term future. And also give them advice on what to expect and what to look out for and what to um, focus on things of that nature. So it's very profound, very powerful readings, and it can show you where you're located at on the tree of life, and not can, but will show you, okay? So once again, to be able to book that, check out the second link below. You're gonna see that link, say, it's gonna say square appointments. So other than that, I'm gonna wrap it up there. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day or night, wherever you are, and I will see you on the next video. Peace.